Hello, I'm Jonathan here at Martin Inch and & Sons and on this week's Something for the Weekend video uh, we're going to have an overview and a first look at the brand new FTM 6000E from Yesi. This week uh, we're going to have a look and an overview and basically some of the functions uh, of the FTM 6000. Uh, brand new from Yesi, they've only just arrived with us and they're now in stock. Uh, so let's start by uh, looking at the front panel of the radio. Uh, we can see it's got a large uh, LCD display uh, with, uh, with really easy to, to read writing, which is I say, it's really quite large. So even if you're um, in the car, got this mounted uh, somewhere, you're going to be able to see that front panel. Um, on the uh, right hand side we've got a, a VFO knob, also of course we'll, uh, we'll go through your channels if you've got uh, stored in memories. I've got three buttons underneath the screen. Uh, we've got the um, programmable F1 button there and also the uh, menu button on the right hand side. Volume knob just here as well as the power and lock button uh, just on the left. So that's the front uh, of the radio. Um, we can see it's on this lovely bracket that uh, Yesu started offering with the FTM 300. Uh, more on that uh, in just a moment. And on the top we can see uh, the large 3 watt speaker which provides really crisp audio. Uh, even when you're mobile you're going to hear that over, new, over the, uh, the road noise um, as well. Uh, I'll just quickly turn the radio off so I can just take the front panel off just to show you behind there. Uh, we can see that the front panel is attached by a standard RJ45 connector, uh, as we've uh, seen them do now on, on a couple of radios. Uh, and the microphone, uh, which uh, plugs in again behind that front panel into the main body, uh, is on the sort of standard RJ11 uh, type that GS have been using for many years for their mobile radios. So let's plug the microphone back in, and that just sort of roots through that cable hole there. And we'll plug the, uh, the main... Uh, the detachable front panel back in as well. This is a bit hard when I'm at this angle, but there we go, let's uh, get that back in. And we'll clip the front panel on. And I'll just disconnect the cables on the back and I'll show you the rear of the radio. So on the back of the radio, uh, we've got uh, a standard SO239 uh, for your antenna connector. So obviously to accept a PL259 plug. And on the right hand side, we've got a speaker output. Uh, so if you wanted to maybe put the main body of the radio, maybe in the boot and you're not gonna be able to hear the, the speaker, and you could put an external speaker. And you've also got a 10 pin mini DIN socket just there uh, for uh, packets. So one of the nice things about the FTM 6000 uh, is that it supports a uh, proper packet, an AX25. So if you want to connect it up to a TNC, you could do. Uh, you've got two packet rates on the back there, two board rates, uh, of both 1200 for things like APRS or 9600 for some of the more uh, demanding uh, applications. Of course, the nice thing about that uh, is that A, you can use it with a TNC for yeah, packet and, and APRS if you wanted to. Uh, but you could also use it for connection up as a sort of an echo link node or, uh, or maybe even by teaming it with something like an MMDVM board that we do from Zum Radio. Uh, you could use this as a, uh, as a digital mode node if you wanted to. Uh, and uh, you may notice on, just on the back there, as a blank TOF speaker B socket, and that's because Yosu have reused the chassis from the FTM 300. Uh, of course, doing a little bit of cost saving, of course, passing that cost on to you as the end user. Uh, so reusing the same chassis, so it's, it's a nice form factor that we know already. Uh, and it's a fantastic, uh, fantastic form. Uh, and just a very quick mention on the very right hand side of the uh, front panel, just there's a USB connector uh, for doing firmware updates and that cable is provided in the box with the radio. Right, let's get the radio plugged back in and we'll have a quick look at the menu system. Okay, so we move the cameras around uh, just so you could have a face on view of uh, the radio. Uh, so as we can see, when we're presented with the radio, as I said just now, it's a very uh, clear front panel. Um, and let's just have a quick look at uh, the sort of the menu structure, because I said there's kind of like two levels of menu. Um, if we do a very quick momentary press on the uh, F button, then we get four options up on the menu. So um, they are currently home, uh, repeat reverse, repeat set, and TX power. Uh, and we can use the scrunch back button not to go back. If we do a long press on that button, uh, we can get into the full menu. And what's really nice about how Yesu have done this is that any of these menu settings here can be allocated into that quick menu setting we just saw. 
So if, for instance, we didn't want uh, any of those, I mean, we didn't want the, the home functionality, well, we could replace that with any one of these other menu settings. And that's quite a, a nice feature. It's Yesu, it's part of their new easy to operate three functionality of the radio or menu system um, that enables you to select the functions you're going to be using on a regular basis and they may be different to another user uh, so you can easily set what they want what you want them to be but if you've ever used a Yesu mobile radio before then the uh, abbreviations will tend to make a lot of sense to you uh, so if we go through let's say we wanted to put uh, some CCCSS on uh, that's quite a common thing to do. Well, the first thing we're going to do is go into squelch type, and we have four options here. We have uh, off, uh, tone encode, tone squelch, uh, rev tone, or DCS. And we can uh, also bring a pager. We're going to go, let's say we just want to transmit CTSS. We want to have an open receiver, but we're going to transmit CTSS. I want time down with that. Squelch type, tone encode, and that takes us back to the thing. So we're going to go back into it. Now we just need to tell it what frequency we want. So we've got a squelch code, and then we can select our tone frequency. So let's say we wanted to put that onto 118.8 hertz. There we go, as easy as that. And now when we're going to transmit, we're going to be transmitting 118.8. Let's, um, let's say we wanted to um, set a repeater into uh, the menu, and let's say we wanted to use a repeater that's got a bit of an, uh, a non-standard shift. Um, now, out of the box, these radios um, will be set up for the European 7.6 meg shift, uh, and you'll have to do the button pushes in order to make them the standard 1.6 meg shift for the UK. We haven't done that modification for this radio yet. So I can show you, if we were to, say, put a, a 70 centimetre um, repeater in here with a 1.6 meg shift, I'm going to have to do that uh, that shift and set that up manually. So this is a good demonstration. Um, so uh, here we are, we're on a, a repeater output frequency of 433325. Um, if we um, press the menu button and we find, uh, let's go to uh, RPT OTR. And this is gonna select then how we want to do it. So we've either got automatic repeater shift um, or repeater frequency. We're gonna go repeater frequency and there we go, 1.6 megs, but we can change that should we want to, and we can scroll through to whatever we want, but I'm gonna leave this at 1.6 megs. Then we're gonna do a momentary press on the F button, then I go to repeater set, positive shift, done. So see, we are shifting. If we wanted to commit that to memory, we can easily do that by pressing and holding the VMMW button, and that's gonna go there. I'm gonna select the next um, free channel, and we're going to press and hold that again, and it commits it to memory, and it puts us in the memory mode. And as you can see, I've already put a few other memories in here. Uh, I was playing around with, um, with the radio earlier on and found it very easy to do. If you make a mistake or you want to override a memory, that's easy to do as well. If we go back into the VFO mode, and let's say, actually, we wanted it to be 275. Okay, hit that memory uh, button again. So we're going to go to the one we've had there. We're going to press and hold that. It's going to ask us if we want to overwrite. Press and hold again, and it commits it to memory. So again, it's a very easy system to use. Another thing the radio does is uh, group memories by band, and that's done under the grouping section. I'm not going to go too deeply in that to now, uh, but the, uh, the, menu, uh, the manual explains how to do that. Uh, one final thing I'm going to have a quick look at is squelch. Obviously, we've got a, a volume control but we haven't got a squelch pot as previous yacy radios have instead that's up here on here so we've got squelch and then, then we just select the squelch level using the vfo encoder um, for most of the time set at level one is going to be enough but if you're in a high noise area you might want to bump that up slightly if we have a quick look at uh, the microphone itself then we've got uh, a full dtf keypad as we can see and there's also four programmable buttons uh, on the bottom of the microphone and these can be configured to almost any function on the radio if we uh, just show you here if we go back into uh, the menu and we can find uh, mic pgm then we can see we've got four options here which correspond to the four p buttons across the bottom of the microphone also a nice mute button, which Yesu sort of started doing with the uh, FTDX101 with the microphone ship with that uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, so that's quite nice. If, um, if you need to quickly mute the radio, 
Um, maybe if you're in the car, let's say, and maybe you've got a call coming through. That's, uh, that's happened to me on more than one occasion. Uh, that's quite easy. You can now just hit the mute button and it's going to completely silence the radio. It's going to flash up mute on the radio until you unmute the radio again by hitting the mute button. That's quite a handy feature, which I, I do quite like. Of course, other functions you'd expect, there's obviously a lock functionality, so you can't accidentally nudge the, uh, uh, the VFO. Um, and there are, of course, four, uh, three power output levels on here, low, medium, and high of 5, 25, and 50 watts, um, respectively. Uh, again, you can easily set one of the buttons on the microphone to be that, otherwise that will save you going into the menu. But of course, if you wanted to, you could set that F1 button to be that function as well. So that's pretty much the radio. We've gone through a few of the basic functions. As I say it's got a three watt speaker on the top, which is really nice and loud, and you can easily hear that over the road noise uh, as you're driving down the road. Of course, this is a mobile radio, and it is just worth saying that although the radio is shipped with an extension cable for the front panel, uh, it's not shipped with an extension cable for the microphone, and the microphone does plug into the main body, uh, and we do sell those uh, separately. If you have a look on our website for the FTM mic extension cable, uh, you'll find that on our website. So there we have it, that is the FTM 6000, available in stock now from Martin Lynch & Sons, they're 25995 at time of recording. Uh, you can find the full details and of course uh, the manual online at hamradio.co.uk. And uh, don't forget, be subscribed to us here on YouTube as well, hit the subscribe button and click that uh, notification bell and you'll be notified every time we either upload a video or go live and we also do a live video every Saturday uh, as our weekend webcast as well. Until next time, bye bye.